Not every ancient civilization had a written language. Not every technological breakthrough was recorded for posterity. Because of that, not all of the technology of the ancient world is fully understood. We'd even struggle to replicate some of it today. Scientists can't always explain the seemingly sophisticated technologies of our ancestors, as you're about to find out by watching this video. Let's start with the Dropa Stones, which were discovered by Dr. Chi Pu Tai while he was out walking in the Bayan Kara Ula Mountains of China in 1938. In these images, they look like vinyl records, but even that would have been impossible for the time. Vinyl records weren't invented until 10 years later. In any event, these artifacts are made from stone, not plastic. Dr. Chi Pu Tai took his discoveries home for closer investigation, and with the help of a magnifying glass, he realized there were tiny hieroglyphs carved into the grooves on their surfaces. Unable to translate the hieroglyphs, he sent the artifacts away to a colleague in the hope of getting some answers, and that's when they disappeared. Although they're referenced as being in the private collection of a Chinese museum in 1974, the Dropa Stones were never seen again and are still missing today. Some people claim they never existed at all, but these photographs seem to suggest otherwise. Who made these artifacts and why? Has somebody confiscated them because they don't want us to find out? Unlike the Dropa Stones, there's no debate about the existence of the Antikythera mechanism. It definitely exists. It's just that we don't know what it was used for. The strange artifact was recovered from a 2,000-year-old Greek shipwreck and is the only example of its kind ever recovered. While its 2,000-year stay in the sea has left it in poor condition, we can still tell that the object contains moving parts. Because of that, some people like to describe it as the world's first computer. They believe that it was a navigational device of some kind, a theory backed by the fact that some of the markings on the exterior surfaces of the artifact appear to line up with objects visible in the night sky. If that's really the case, we can draw a straight line between this and the modern GPS technology we all have on our smartphones today. Where the theory falls down is that if this is a navigational device, we should be able to find more of them on other ancient shipwrecks. That hasn't happened so far. And so the singular nature of the Antikythera mechanism makes it an enigma. While scientists haven't put forward any explanation at all for some of the items you'll see in this video, they've come up with something for the Klerksdorp spheres of South Africa. According to them, these unique looking spheres are natural rock formations created through a process known as concretion. In short, they're asking us to believe that they were made by nature. In that case, we guess nature has decided to start manufacturing cricket balls. To date, the spheres have only ever been found deep inside South African mines. They have polished surfaces, a slightly red shade, and a seam running around their exterior in exactly the same place you'd find the seam of a cricket ball. They also contain traces of metals that can't possibly have gotten there through any normal concretion process and their outer shell is a lot harder than their soft interior. Taken all together, that strongly suggests that they're the product of deliberate and intelligent design. Perhaps scientists would have an easier task accepting that conclusion were it not for the fact that most of the Klerksdorp spheres are almost three billion years old. Technology doesn't have to be ancient in order for its secrets to be forgotten. Our next mysterious technological marvel is the Marx Generator hiding in the woods of Moscow, Russia, which is also known as the Tesla Tower. As a 1970s product of Soviet engineering, it's shrouded in mystery. Here's what we know. The Marx Generator was built by the Russian Electrical Engineering Institute and overseen by Boris Yeltsin, who would go on to become president of Russia. This colossally powerful facility can generate six megavolt pulses and can also create electrical discharges over 600 feet long. 
It's thought that it was built to test the lightning protection properties of Soviet military aircraft, although that can't be confirmed because of its top-secret status. When it was fully active, the Tesla Tower could generate more electricity than every other power generation facility in Russia put together. That includes nuclear facilities. Each high-voltage pulse would last only 100 microseconds. But for those 100 microseconds, there was nothing more powerful on Earth. Rebuilding it now without a blueprint would be a huge challenge, even for the greatest scientific minds on Earth. The Saqqara bird really shouldn't be such a big mystery. After all, it's just a tiny ancient Egyptian hand carving. What could be so mysterious about that? The answer is that its proportions are perfectly engineered to be capable of flight. If you threw this 2,200-year-old artifact off the top of a mountain, it would glide perfectly, with just the same aerodynamic efficiency as any glider we'd be capable of making today. Although the artifact has a bird's head, the rest of it looks more like a plane than anything avian. The wings are featherless, flat, thin, and tapered. The tail is square. During the 1970s, a curious group of students scaled up the Saqqara bird to make a plane-sized replica and demonstrated that it could both fly and glide without any tailoring required. If this had been made in the past decade, we wouldn't hesitate to call it a modern aircraft. But the ancient Egyptians had no aircraft to use as reference guides when making models. Might this have been a flying child's toy of some kind? Or did the person who make this understand the basic principles of flight, even if they couldn't make a powered flying machine? The speed of change within the fields of science and technology accelerated rapidly toward the end of the High Middle Ages. The clock had already been invented, but a humble clock wasn't considered to be prestigious enough for an important public building. Having an astronomical clock was all the rage, and never was a better one built than the one in Prague. The dials on the astonishingly ornate face of the Prague astronomical clock built in 1410, track the movement of the sun and the moon in both Old Czech time and Central European time. Legend has it that the clock was built by a mathematician named Hannes, who refused to tell the city council how he'd created such an elaborate device. The council was grateful for the clock, but they were worried that Hannes might build another one for another city. So they blinded him to make sure he couldn't. That probably isn't true, but it's a delightfully twisted myth. There's also a zodiac circle set into the face of the clock, and another circle within that is decorated with Roman numerals. As if that weren't enough, it's also surrounded by automatons that move and interact with the clock face at specific times of the day. It might be the greatest clockwork invention of all time. The existence of the Prague astronomical clock reminds us that human beings have been interested in stargazing since time immemorial. That's something that the clock has in common with Cheom Seong Dai in Gyeongju, South Korea, which is thought to be the oldest observatory in the world. The distinctive structure was built back in the 7th century era of the Silla Kingdom, and there are some who believe the building is full of encoded information. For a start, the Chomsyong Dai is made from precisely 362 granite blocks. That's one block for each day in a lunar year. The granite blocks create 27 layers, which may be a reference to the fact that Queen Xiangjuk, who was on the throne when Chomsyong Dai was built, was the 27th ruler of the Silla Kingdom. Count the number of layers above and below the building's single window and you'll get 12 in each direction, which could be one for every month of the year, or one for every sign of the zodiac. The tower is entirely circular, except for the base, which is square. That's four sides, one for every season. Numerical symbology clearly mattered to whoever built Cheomsyong Dai, but we don't know if we're reading too much into it. Alternatively, perhaps there's more information to decode that nobody's worked out yet. There are a few examples 
of ancient technology that's so perfectly suited to its task that it continued to be used for centuries, almost up to the present day. The Nilometers of Egypt are a perfect example of such technology, and the Nilometer of Cairo is the best example of its kind. The Nilometer that can be seen in Cairo now has stood since the 9th century, but it's believed to have been built as a replacement for one that stood there for much longer, perhaps as long as 5,000 years. In basic terms, the Nilometer is a massive octagonal column surrounded by staircases. The priests of ancient Egypt would descend the staircases and monitor the water level of the River Nile. That information could then be used to predict the outcome of harvests or to forecast future droughts. Such knowledge was limited to the priests themselves and the members of the royal household they served. Egyptian rulers didn't want common people to know of the possibility of drought or famine. They considered that to be privileged information. Farmers might have gotten a few tips from the priests in terms of what to plant and when, but they were probably told that the information came from the gods. While we're in Egypt, let's take a moment to talk about egg ovens. These egg ovens have been made the same way for 2,000 years, and in all that time, we've never come up with a more efficient way of artificially incubating and hatching eggs. These rustic, simple-looking ovens can hatch as many as 4,000 eggs at a time. That's an industrial quantity, and it explains why Egyptian poultry farmers were never short of chickens. These might be little more than mud ovens, but they're precision engineered to create the perfect condition for a fertilized egg to hatch in, and they display a far greater level of understanding of the basic principles of poultry farming than what existed in Europe at the same time. The ovens are still used today, and the secrets of their construction are still shielded from tourists. A rural Egyptian egg oven owner might be happy to proudly show off their oven to a curious visitor, but they'll never tell you how they made it. The largest examples of their kind even had living quarters and restrooms for workers to take a break in after a long day of placing eggs. Imagine living in a massive mud oven. The definition of an out-of-place artifact is one that has no business being in the place it was found. It's hard to imagine an artifact being as out of place as this tiny Swiss watch. It was found inside a Ming Dynasty tomb in Shanxi, China in 2008. Archaeologists believe that the tomb hadn't been opened for 400 years. Switzerland didn't even exist as a country back then, and yet the word Switzerland is clearly printed on the back of the device. Watches did exist during the 17th century when this tomb was built, but nothing this small or sophisticated. It's a ring watch, and as far as anyone knows, it can't have been made more than a century ago at most. The question of how it got into the tomb is unresolved. One of the wilder theories is that the watch was dropped and then picked up by a rodent, which subsequently burrowed its way into the tomb. It's also possible that a ring watch wearing grave robber broke into the tomb and then resealed it, seemingly without stealing anything in the process. Tomb Raiders don't tend to wear ring watches though, and the presence of this object inside the tomb remains unexplained. The Inca people of ancient Peru had no written language, which means there's an awful lot about their civilization that we don't understand, and probably never will. Among the mysteries they left behind for us is Aramumuru, which appears to be an unfinished construction project. We say unfinished because the centerpiece of Aramumuru is a doorway set into solid rock. It's been there for centuries, but went unnoticed by archaeologists until local mountaineer Jose Luis Delgado Mamani stumbled across it while out walking during the early 1990s on the banks of Lake Titicaca, not far from Peru's border with Bolivia. The T-shaped doorway is just over six feet tall and is known by the local native people as Puerta de Hayumarca. That translates into English as the Gate of the Gods and is connected with a long-standing myth 
that people have been seen approaching the doorway and then disappearing through it into the rock, after which they were never seen or heard from again. We can put that down to superstition, but we're unable to say why the doorway was created using advanced rock carving methods and then abandoned. The great monuments of ancient Egypt have received endless attention from archaeologists and scientists over the years, but perhaps the experts should have focused more on some of the country's smaller mysteries. To be more specific, we're talking about the plethora of perfectly drilled small holes in gigantic blocks of granite in Abu Sir. There are hundreds of examples of this unexplained drilling technique in Abu Ghraib alone. On the rare occasions we need to drill holes in granite today, we use hydraulic drills with tips made of diamond. That wasn't an option for the Egyptians who worked on these granite blocks thousands of years ago. We're told that these ancient people used sand, water, and copper saws to shape and cut granite. That might explain how a granite block could be cut in two, but it doesn't even get close to explaining how such precise holes could be drilled into the surface. None of the handheld tools that are known to have been available at the time would have been capable of making these holes. The only conclusion we can draw is that the Egyptians had other stone cutting technology at their disposal, and we have no idea what it was. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!